Hi, I'm Aaron Arslan, owner of Arslan Fleet, where we've added over 100 cars to the Turo platform. And I've seen some horror stories when it comes to picking out cars to put on the Turo platform because people don't necessarily know the criteria for buying a Turo car. So Turo has their own criteria, which is some metrics that you have to fit it within. And then I actually have a few other pieces of criteria that I'm gonna show you when I'm picking out a Turo car to make sure that it's going to be a great performer. So let's talk about what it takes for a car to be even Turo eligible in the first place. So obviously Turo is gonna have a few of their own requirements because naturally they don't want any trashy cars on the platform. These cars that you're putting onto Turo have to fit within this requirement or else they will literally not be listed on the platform. Turo is not even gonna allow it. So when you're picking out a car, and you know it's gonna be used for Turo, please make sure you are following these requirements. So number one, that car needs to be 12 years old or less. One thing to point out is you're gonna see these requirements, so with the years and the miles, but if you get a vehicle and you put it onto the Turo platform and then it surpasses those requirements while it's on the platform, they're not gonna take it down. They're going to grandfather it in, essentially, because you put it on the platform when it was eligible. Now, if it's on the platform and it's having a lot of issues, guests are getting upset with things, that's when Turo is gonna say, hey, this car's gotta go, and they're gonna take it down. But if you have a well-maintained car and you're not getting any complaints about the vehicle or the condition of it, then you're gonna to be totally fine. So like I said, 12 years old or less is what we're looking at when we're looking at Turo specific requirements. Also, it has to be less than 130,000 miles on the vehicle, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend you have one that you purchased around that mileage anyway. You also wanna make sure that the car is valued at $200,000 or less. I believe the reason for this is because Turo doesn't wanna insure a car that's over $200,000, which completely makes sense. And if you're in the situation where you you want to be adding a car that's over two hundred thousand dollars come talk to me and we can maybe disperse that money in a better way and make more return on your money so congrats if you're at that point make sure that the car also has a clean title and it's not a salvage title nor is it a branded title you'll be able to tell by just literally looking at the physical title for the vehicle and if you're not completely clear just do a quick google search of what does a clean title in you know, whatever state the car is being bought from. What does a clean title in Colorado look like? And it'll show you pictures on Google of what that looks like. And then to be double sure, maybe look up what a salvage or branded title looks like. And you're gonna see that they're different colors or might even say salvage on the title or branded on the title. So just be very careful of that. And then this is what people get tripped up on a lot of times. Sometimes they will have a car that has a clean title and it actually has still been declared a total loss at some point. So you can, yes, have a vehicle that has a clean title and it has also been declared a total loss. Don't ask me how that works, nitty gritty with insurance, but make sure that you just know it has a clean title, no total loss. And then I believe we also can't have any mileage rollback on that vehicle. Now make sure that you're looking into if there's been any recent changes with the Turo requirements, because I would hate for you to go through try to fit within these requirements, but Turo has just updated something. So even if this video is a month old and you're you know, looking at putting a Turo vehicle on, just go online, search Turo vehicle requirements and make sure that these are still the guidelines. Now, beyond the Turo requirements, I have my own criteria that we've come up with for adding vehicles to our fleet. And this is essentially just making sure that the car is even worth your time to manage on the Turo platform. So the first thing that I'm gonna tell you if you're trying to make money on your vehicle, this should be pretty straightforward and obvious almost. Just make sure that your projected monthly earnings are going to be greater than your car payment plus any projected expenses at a bare minimum, just to know that you're not losing money every single month that the car is on the platform. You wouldn't believe how many cars you could add to the platform and you look at the maintenance and the insurance and the warranties and car payment, and those expenses are going to outpace what your actual projected earnings are. Now, if you're just making a little bit more than what your projected monthly earnings are, it could still maybe be worthwhile because when you think about it, you are putting money into that vehicle and you're retaining a certain amount of that principal towards the vehicle. So at some point, you're gonna sell it and have a big payday at the end of its life on the Turo platform. So think about it like a 
house, if you have a rental property and you're renting it out and you're paying off the mortgage, but you're only making a little bit of cash on top, it's kind of the same idea there. But because of the amount of legwork that really goes into managing a turbo car, we want to have a bit more margins than say property, for example. Now, the second thing is purchase price. We want to make sure that the purchase price, and this is going to be including taxes and fees. A lot of times you'll be kind of blindsided by the taxes and fees that go on top of a vehicle purchase. So make sure to account for that. This should be no more than two times what the Turo calculator says the vehicle is projected to earn in a year. If, for example, you buy a car that is $20,000, we want to make sure that the calculator thinks you can make around $10,000 on that vehicle. Now, if you're somebody who is more so using this vehicle as pleasure and just wants to have it on Turo to pay off some of the car payment, but Turo is not necessarily your primary reason for purchasing the vehicle, then that might be a different situation. But more so if you're trying to maximize your ROI, make sure that your car's purchase price is no more than double what the average annual earnings would be for the calculator. And then the last thing that I'm checking for a vehicle that I'm adding to one of my fleets is the reliability scores. And I look at the consume reports to check reliability. And when you get on there, they're gonna show you a rating out of 100. And we wanna make sure that that rating has at least a 60 out of 100. So once you get below a 60, it gets to the point where it's probably just better to pass on that vehicle, but 60 and up tends to be the more reliable vehicles. So let's jump into consumer reports and we'll dive a little bit deeper into how I actually analyze that reliability score number so you can get a better understanding. And because I worked at Ford in the past, I'm gonna go ahead and pick on them and let's look at a uh, Ford Escape. Look for like a 2015 Ford Escape. So we'll jump into here and right off the bat, we can see that it has a pretty low reliability score. I would look at this and then just move on to the next car in my opinion. But just for this example, let's go ahead and jump a little bit further into it. So I'm gonna go here and click on reliability and scroll down. This is going to show you kind of the most common trouble spots on the vehicle. We can see that the transmission on a 2015 Ford Escape is going to be pretty terrible. So the transmission major and the transmission minor both got a one out of five on reliability, which is bad. So you'd be looking for a transmission replacement soon after you bought this car. As we keep scrolling, we've got a two out of five on the electronics. We've got a two out of five on the fuel system and emissions. And then we have the drive system and it goes a little bit up from there, exhaust, steering. Overall, this is probably a car that I would say pass on if it were me. In contrast, I wanna show you what a very reliable vehicle looks like. So let's look at a Toyota Prius for this next example, because I would assume that this is going to have great scores for you to see. So let's again, maybe just go to a 2015. And as we scroll down, we have a 77 out of 100. So that does pass based on our 60 out of 100 metric. Now I would still recommend jump in here, click on reliability and see what any trouble spots could be. And we're looking at brakes at a three out of five, the paint at three out of five. We'll probably start to notice that everything else is pretty good, which we like. And if anything was gonna have a trouble spot, I would want it to be paint, honestly. So mechanically, this looks like a very sound car. Now, when you are getting a pre-purchase inspection on this car, make sure you are paying close attention to something that it says is a trouble spot. Check out those brakes on a Toyota Prius because that has a three out of five and make sure that those are all good to go because you might find some errors if that is one of the lower scores. And so there's my specific criteria and recommendation for adding a vehicle to Turo beyond Turo's initial requirements. Now, if we're getting a bit fancy and different, you might be in the deluxe vehicles range when you're adding a car to Turo. And so a deluxe vehicle is a car anywhere between the $45,000 and $85,000 value. And I believe they use the black book similar to Kelly Blue Book, so that would give you a good idea, but they use black book on how they measure the vehicle's value. Now, if you have questions about how they came up with the vehicle value, or you think they value the vehicle incorrectly, you can actually get an appraisal done by a dealership or somebody certified to give appraisals on vehicles and submit that to Turo. So say for example, you want your vehicle to be a deluxe vehicle according to Turo, However, they valued it at 43,000 when you need it to be 45,000 to be deluxe. Get that appraisal done and have that submitted to Turo. 
This is typically not going to be done on just like the bare bones vehicle, but if you have certain upgrades or anything, you can get an appraisal done and submit it to Turo and they may value it higher after you've submitted that. But anyway, if your car's value is between 45 and 85,000, then you do qualify as a deluxe vehicle. And that means that you get a couple extra perks when you're renting out that vehicle. So typically when you're renting a car out, you are forced to at least allow 200 miles a day for your guest to drive. And some people think that's a bit too high to allow 200 miles a day, that's a bit excessive. So when you get to the deluxe vehicle range, they do allow you to split that in half and only allow your guests to drive 100 miles a day rather than that 200 miles a day. So your vehicle is not gonna depreciate as much is kind of the bright side of that. However, I have noticed that when you lower that mileage, you might be sacrificing bookings and make less money off the car. So it's kind of give and take. I would say kind of feel it out with 100 and if you are getting good bookings and you're making good money on the vehicle, then continue with where you are. But if you notice that you're not getting that many bookings, maybe go ahead and bump it up to that 200 range. I rarely see people you know, getting all the way to that range anyway when they're renting from me. So just something to consider there. And lastly, the guest requirements become a bit more exclusive. Any guest renting out a deluxe vehicle has to be 25 years old or older to rent that car. They also have to pay a security deposit and they have some additional security checks in order to rent out that car from you. So you're gonna be getting hopefully more responsible and more reliable renters Plus you have that security deposit for peace of mind. Next, there is the super deluxe vehicle. And these vehicles are valued above $85,000. And again, just like with a deluxe vehicle, the super deluxe vehicles can also be reduced to 100 miles per day. The only difference that you get with a super deluxe vehicle is that your guests have to be at least 30 years old to rent your car. So the idea here is that you're getting an even more responsible renter with the super deluxe vehicle category. And then lastly, we have the specialty or classic cars. And so with these vehicles, according to Turo, it has to be 25 years old or older to be considered a specialty or classic car. Although they do make special considerations for certain vehicles that are 12 to 25 years old. So it really seems like you can add pretty much any age vehicle to Turo. However, certain special considerations have to come into play. And then the market value on a classic vehicle is going to be anything up to $85,000 is allowed. So once you surpass that $85,000 range, that's probably something that they're not going to want you adding to the platform. And I believe this again is something to do with their Turo coverage. They don't actually want to be covering a classic car that is valued over $85,000 for some reason. And then of course, because of the age of the car, they're gonna be looking a lot more into the condition of the vehicle, mechanically as well as cosmetically when you're adding it. And very importantly, they are also looking at the seat belts to make sure that the safety considerations are kept in mind. Now, the main thing here to consider is that Turo has final say when they're adding a vehicle to the platform. So make sure that if you are adding a classic car or a specialty vehicle, these guidelines don't really make me too comfortable that I could go out and buy a car and be 100% certain that that car is going to be allowed onto the platform. So get in touch with Turo before even purchasing a vehicle if you're buying it for Turo because the last thing that I want you to do is buy a car, expect to be able to rent it out, and then Turo says, oh, because of this, we're not going to allow it. So with that said, that is all the requirements and criteria that I have for you today when adding a vehicle to Turo. So hopefully this will help you avoid a massive mistake of buying a vehicle strictly for your business and you can't even rent it out.